Uh, hello everybody, uh, I am Dr. Jinan Osta, I'm the president of OKIMR, and I would like to congratulate and welcome you to this webinar, which is supposed to uh, celebrate the, work, the, uh, world the, the World Family Doctors' Day. It is this time of the year, each uh, year, it's this time of the day each year that we celebrate the uh, World Family Doctors' Day. The theme of this year is first in, last out. It was inspired by the uh, uh, COVID pandemic, and it is meant to highlight the role of family doctors and the contributions they can make to primary care and the way they can fight, uh, they can contribute to fight uh, this uh, pandemic. Now, uh, we're having a very wide panelist. Uh, this is uh, a very peculiar event because we're having most of the um, uh, presidents of, or uh, the representatives of uh, Family Medicine Society in the EMR region who are joining us in this event. So it is a celebration across the uh, East Mediterranean region. Uh, we'll start today uh, by uh, the opening remark of Dr. Ahmed al -Mandari. Uh, we all know Dr. Ahmed al -Mandari. He is the uh, WHO representative, RD, and above all, he is also a family physician. And we're very glad and honored to have this day to celebrate with us the uh, Family Doctor Day. Uh, the, it is to note that Dr. Mendeley will not be staying for the whole uh, event because he has appointments. So he'll be staying for around 10, 10 minutes after he finishes his speech. If anybody has a comment, please, uh, you have enough time to present after he finishes. Uh, Dr. Mendeley, please. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon and good, good evening colleagues. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ginan, for arranging this important meeting and very important discussion uh, that is coming at a very critical timing in which we need all to, you know, gather, uh, to, to come together and share ideas and share thoughts and experiences and bring suggestions together to deal, inshallah, successfully with this uh, pandemic. Uh, it is my great pleasure and my great honor, you know, to be in this discussion. And as you said, I'm, I apologize in advance for not being able to continue with you this important discussion because I have some other commitments, but inshallah, I will follow it up with Salah about the outcome and the suggestions that you can bring us and, and in fact, you know, implement and work together uh, to fight this pandemic. We just, in fact, a few minutes back, uh, concluded WHA 73, 73rd WHA meeting, which we have done it for the first time in the history of WHO uh, virtually. You know, we are supposed to be nowadays in Geneva for about two weeks discussing different issues relevant to global health. But uh, this time we you know, managed to get it virtually focusing on uh, COVID or pandemic operations for one and a half day. So we just concluded a few minutes back. One of the key messages in that uh, sort of meeting today and yesterday, uh, one of the messages uh, is, uh, is in fact, you know, partnership and, and uh, working together uh, to cope and fight successfully uh, with this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, and, and as part, you know, of our vision here in IMRO, uh, uh, to, uh, Vision 2023, Health for All, by All, a call for solidarity and, and action. Uh, it is the spirit that we will be working here in Imro, uh, collaborating and cooperating with a very strong, uh, well-esteemed, you know, organizations like Wonka. And we have been enjoying, in fact, you know, uh, this low, close and long-standing partnership with uh, Wonka uh, at global and and at a regional level, and. Um, this is now very appropriate that we come together and mark uh, the World Family Doctor uh, Day uh, for 2020 together, celebrating it together and sharing ideas. Uh, and as you uh, all know, I mean, the role of uh, family doctors, family medicine in general, but family doctors in specific, uh, is never became vital uh, than this, this moment and at this time. Uh, dealing with COVID-19 pandemic. Um, family physicians are at the front line with uh, many other colleagues from other professions, nurses and uh, allied healthcare professionals. Um, 
dealing with uh, patients, uh, tracing them, searching for them, identifying the positive cases, uh, providing whatever uh, you know primary sort of uh, measures, uh, and before shifting them or moving them to the hospitals, dealing with their families uh, and uh, other individuals in the community, dealing with the fear that is strongly linked with uh, this COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic let, let alone with the clinical services. Uh, family practice, uh, to, to me, must be at the central part of, you know, whatever healthcare system that each country uh, try to create and develop to deal with this pandemic. Um, the effective use of family practice can ensure that everyone is really getting a very trusty, uh, you know, trustful message, trustful information uh, from uh, very competent uh, uh, healthcare professionals. Um, you know, uh, depending on reliable sources. Uh, this sort of uh, commitment from family physicians will definitely have a very positive impact when it comes into reducing the load on the healthcare system in general, but when it comes into hospitals in specific, particularly when it comes into dealing with mild to moderate cases at a primary healthcare level and leaving, uh, if we can say the severe cases or maybe a few of moderate cases and definitely severe cases to be dealt at a hospital level. This will definitely will save us um, lives, but uh, as well as resources, you know, to, to be directed to other needs, healthcare needs. Um, family physicians, as I said, you know, they, uh, yes, can successfully deal with the technical part, but, but also they will be able to deal with the, the non-technical part uh, relevant to COVID-19. They can deal with uh, awareness and uh, raising the public uh, uh, educational level about how to deal successfully with COVID-19 pandemic through teaching them whatever you know, uh, preventative measures that have been recommended by many organizations like the WHO. Um, to make uh, this sort of uh, thing happening in a very comprehensive manner, uh, we need, as we all know, that uh, you know, to work together with the three levels of the organization. And this has to be really reflected uh, in the mind of the healthcare leaders, first of all, and decision makers, but as well as in the mind of uh, our colleagues uh, working in the, in the two levels at the prime, I mean, secondary and tertiary levels. Uh, otherwise, uh, the whole healthcare system will face difficulty without uh, strong involvement of the family medicine system or uh, our family medicine colleagues and practitioners. Uh, WHO has been working closely with many other organizations, including Wonka, you know, to support countries uh, by adapting, uh, uh, adopting, you know, a very comprehensive integrated approach. And uh, together, as I said, with Wonka and many other organizations like uh, UN AIDS, the UN Population Fund, uh, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, UNICEF, and many other UN agencies. Uh, we have developed a guidance for primary care policy makers uh, and providers on the role of primary care during this pandemic. The gu guidance identified four main uh, uh, key areas or key rules for primary care uh, to deal with this pandemic. One of the first rule of primary health care or family physicians or family practitioners is, you know, ensuring the continuity of the care given to uh, individuals and community members. And um, continue to hear, hear it means uh, it is not only for COVID uh, relevant services, but for many other services that unfortunately have been a bit ignored because we, we tend to focus our attention only to COVID-19 operations. And now I'm sure statistics, if you go to how many disabilities or deaths that are resulting from non-communicable diseases, from uh, other you know, risks relevant to health, I'm sure that the number is really frightening. So uh, continuity is one of the important things that family physicians can uh, really lead. The other component of this um, sort of document and guidance is um, the preventative uh, measures that is uh, you know, fully supported by evidence, evidence-based medicine when it comes into public health measures. 
uh, to be taken by um, members and individuals in the community, and that has been recommended by WHO. Uh, it is uh, a package of uh, public health measures like social distancing, following um, uh, you know uh, the, uh, the cleaning uh, and uh, protective measures when it comes into avoiding uh, mass gatherings, wearing uh, masks or wearing gloves or washing hands and uh, cleaning, you know, these sort of uh, measures and activities. Uh, also, the third one is the, the, di the diagnostic part of COVID-19 cases and ensuring that uh, uh, a very efficient and effective uh, referral system is being implemented at, uh, at the country level. O otherwise, uh, the hospitals will be overloaded with all COVID-19 um, and positive cases. So the right uh, diagnostic tool with the right referral system is created uh, in, in the healthcare system in order to make sure that hospitals are not going to be overloaded. And uh, the third point is uh, when it comes into uh, the management itself for mild and most of moderate, moderate cases, if not all of moderate cases to be handled and, and taken care by uh, the primary care level with the family physicians and family medicine doctors are available there. So these four main components are definitely very important. And uh, online training have been, uh, I think, is uh, created and um, uh, it is uh, uh, being introduced. But I'm, I'm sure Dr. Salah and uh, you are good self, Dr. Ginan and Dr. Hassan, um, you know, and other colleagues will definitely add uh, into the discussions. Uh, when it comes into uh, the pandemic itself, again, you know, it is very crucial to ensure that people everywhere to continue receive other essential services. And this has been repeatedly mentioned uh, in all of our discussions, either within WHO or between WHO and other you know, agencies and ministries of health in, in the countries. Um, because of COVID-19 for the first few weeks of this pandemic, our attention have been more on, on it, ignoring uh, services like immunization, like maternal and child health, like uh, services given to patients suffering from other communicable diseases like diabetes, like uh, HIV. And in fact, we, we have got some uh, data and information uh, reflecting on this, you know, the negative impact of this sort of focus on COVID-19 only. And, uh, um, the other point, you know, before I conclude, I would like to add is about, uh, you know, the fear that is there sometimes in, uh, inside the, in, in, or within the community from this COVID-19, uh, which leads them sometimes to following uh, some, uh, some uh, non-evidence-based behaviors like uh, drinking, drinking some sort of disinfectants or um, uh, some sort of uh, herbs or this sort of information that are coming to them from here and there, especially with the social um, media, you know, infodemics, as we say. And I'm sure here the role of family physicians is at the heart of educating the community members and giving them the right information. Uh, and to me, you know, based on my limited experience working in, as a family physician, patients their families and the rest of the family, I mean, the community members, they trust us a lot when it comes into giving them the real uh, uh, full picture about any sort of disease, let alone this pandemic in which people are lacking a lot of information and they are, uh, they seek getting information from the reliable source, sources. My last uh, comment is, you know, I would like to thank uh, uh, all colleagues who are really working at the front line uh, the whole team, you know, from uh, nurses, uh, physicians, um, all other colleagues working in the laboratories, the pharmacies, and other uh, uh, allied healthcare professionals and uh, teams for their uh, hard work and commitment. And in fact, you know, uh, we lost uh, some of our colleagues in different uh, countries here. They lost, their, they lost their life because they were at the front line and uh, they have given their uh, life sacrifice, you know, to save the lives of others. So um, we pray Allah to accept them and bless them. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ginan, again for inviting me and I'm really very honored and pleased to be with you. And I'm sorry again, you know, that I have to leave because of other commitments. And I'm looking forward to have this sort of strong collaboration as usual and partnership with, the, with Wonka 
and uh, hearing from what other suggestions that you would like uh, to propose. And I assure you, inshallah, of our full commitment to work together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Mandari. It was very nice. And um, uh, looking forward for more collaborations together, for sure. Thank you, inshallah. Thank you, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shukran Shukran alaylak. Uh, and now uh, we're going to move for the second uh, presentation, which is going to be by Dr. Hassan Ahmede uh, from uh, Lebanon. He is the chairman of Family Medicine Department and, uh, at the AUB and the representative of uh, um, uh, Lebanese Society of Family Medicine in Munka Council. And he will be talking about the basics of telemedicine because we all know that telemedicine is going to be part of the future of uh, healthcare delivery. Uh, and he'll be presenting uh, about telemedicine, telemedicine uh, in primary care. Dr. Hassan Hamede, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jinan. I hope uh, you are hearing me well. Well, if you can nod and say yes, Jinan Osta. Okay. <laughs> so, so I will be presenting, I will be sharing with you a deck of slides that will be for maybe 15 minutes or so. These slides will be uh, also shared with you later on. I think uh, uh, they have references. It's a collection I have made uh, for this uh, presentation. And uh, as we know, everyone is talking about how tele, 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 everything is important. So we thought to share with you the basics of, uh, of, uh, of telemedicine, so to speak. Um, and I have chosen this picture here that you can look at. It's uh, from the Futurist. Every slide has its reference for you to use later on. If you look at this uh, picture here, you see uh, this drone bringing medications to this camp. And you look at this doctor taking care of this patient. The patient has a state of the art, the Futurist cast, a different you know, special brand. The doctor has an ultrasound portable tool with her taking an ultrasound. This is probably a family doctor in the field, taking an ultrasound of the elbow. This woman has fallen probably and has had her, her cast here. At the same time, this doctor is helped remotely by someone else using a, an, a, some sort of a pad and is able to do uh, maybe a IgG for Corona. God knows what kind of test she is able to do. So technology is everywhere. And um, this is what we'll be sharing with you in the next uh, uh, slides. I'll be talking a little bit about caring from a distance. Uh, some, what are the modalities for caring from a distance? Share some misconceptions or common false conceptions about telemedicine. And we'll talk about whether we're ready for uh, telemedicine or not. So basically it's a general, general uh, introduction, nothing very, very challenging. Caring from a distance is the word that we use is tele, tele, telephone, telemetry. The word tele means from afar. So you can have a telehealth, you can offer health services from afar, all kinds of services. And the telemedicine, which is individual particular patient care, not necessarily other health services uh, beyond the in caring for an individual person. So tele is nothing special, it's just remote, doing things from afar. And the other term that is important for most doctors, family doctors, uh, lay people to know is the, the, the famous internet of things. And a thing means anything, a phone, a watch, a, a refrigerator, a toaster, a, the doorbell, all of these are now connected all together through, uh, through the internet. And that's why they call it an internet of things. I have to get rid of this pictures. So the internet of things because they're all connected and that internet of things is what is making uh, life so different. That is making it so easy to get information at all times from patients or non-patients and so on. And this is, has been going on before COVID. We have seen the rise of, of telemedicine. Uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, mostly, mostly the consumer's expectations are changing because now they're all connected 
and because health insurance and governments think it may be a way to save money. So it, it satisfies the three or four dimensions of care that we often talk about. Now, what are the modalities of caring from far away? Caring from far away can be live, and we call that synchronous, or can be interrupted at uh, intervals, and we call that asynchronous on the left-hand side. So an indirect or asynchronous non-live uh, caring can be through teleradiology. You send x-rays from afar for someone else to read it. You send a picture of a skin. You send an email. You do an, a message, and you wait for someone to respond to you. Or through mobile health can be indirect. We collect data on the fitness trackers, my diet, my exercise, my blood pressure, and so on remotely. And then I send them to the doctor. The doctor looks at them, or the healthcare worker or the nurse, they look at them at a later time. Or it can be synchronous where everything happens at the same time, through a telephone. So a telephone call is really telemedicine. A FaceTime, where you can have a video, you can see the person. A virtual consult or a virtual visit, and then as, as we go on, it gets more and more sophisticated, even with continuous monitoring of my heart rate, continuous monitoring of my height and weight or my oxygen. So it can be direct or indirect. And this is where the misconceptions, people think that telemedicine is something new, it is something that has to be sophisticated. If you look at this picture here, this is a cover page of a magazine from the 1920s when the first the radio was invented. People put this doctor and caring for this person uh, remotely. Interestingly, it is the model where there is a nurse assisting and you know, the prejudice, it's a female, shouldn't be a female, can be a male as well. Taking notes with a doctor, now we have EHR, you can dictate this and then the notes can be taken. And then this person, this doctor remotely taking care of this patient. So this is really, it has medicine through the radio. Has, it's, it's nothing, it is nothing new. It's been present for more than 100 years. Second thing is we always complain that it cannot include a physical exam. Well, a lot of decision making is done without an exam. More than 50% of diagnosis can be reached alone by history alone. And then if we want a physical exam, physical exam is look, listen, and feel. We already have the look, dermatology, ophthalmology, orthopedics. We have the listening, the cardio, the respiratory collections, identification. We don't have the feel. And there is the issue of the healing touch that always comes in with family medicine, the dimension of rapport and so on. So maybe there is a point there. It is not, you know, at this stage, we cannot do all kinds of encounters, all kinds of caring, individual patient caring through uh, remotely through uh, tele-approach. Uh, on all those slides that we'll be sharing with you, we have the references, so you can go and, and read more about particular articles of relevance or websites of relevance. So the, the healing touch. Sometimes we say it is not available and others say, well, it is not bad after all. You know, the phone call after a visit, post-op visit, or, you know, so you're concerned about someone, you tell them to call me. That is some sort of telemedicine. You know, you can video call me so I can look at a, at a wound or I can look at a abrasion and see what it looks like after a visit. So it is important for patient relation. It maintains the patient relation. It would reduce unnecessary visit to follow up for something or follow up or go to emergency room. It would certainly help to review medications for an elderly who cannot move or who cannot come to clinic. Another misconception is that patients do not like it. And then we know from at least this report uh, where they have, uh, you know, how would you rate the virtual visit, a video visit? And you see that the majority in psychiatry, neurology, cardiology visit, they found it that it is satisfactory and they like it. So virtual visit are not bad. A lot of people like them. So it is something, especially now with COVID, we're forced into doing that, and this is gonna become more and more common. So are we ready or have we been pushed into, into those telehealth, telemedicine, teleteaching, telecommunication, telemeeting? Well, COVID pushed us into this, and some countries were not ready. Countries who had poor bandwidth, uh, they're suffering. You know, you have the communication, it falls down, does not work. 
there is issue of education. Do you know how to use the tool? Do you know how to use the system, the software? When we first started doing these tele-meetings, a lot of us did not know what Zoom was, what WebEx. So we had to train people on using them. It was a steep learning curve. So there was some blessing with the COVID that it pushed us into, into, into learning about these things, pushed governments into improving their communication and so on. And leadership and legislation is another issue. And last is, the availability of technology. So I need, I need to do a telecom with the patient. He needs to have a phone. He needs to have, or she needs to have a, she needs to have a computer. I need to, to be able to do this. There is, there is education and technology. Uh, this is summarized by the acronym here, BELT, Bandwidth Education Leadership and Technology. Uh, and this is in, in one of the textbooks of, of uh, informatics. Now, if we are ready and, uh, uh, and you wanna know if your country is ready, WHO publishes regularly and does surveys almost every year on various countries to see if they are ready for e-health. And they have a long checklist. And this is the link. You can go there and, and take a look what needs to be done at your country, what pressures can you do uh, or uh, at, at the level of the government or at the level of healthcare industry to, uh, to make it available for you. Now, I will address besides country readiness and the general, the belt uh, thinking, is what would you need you as a physician, as a family doctor, assuming you have, you have the tools, what are, how can you customize your clinic? How can you customize your practice to offer the telehealth? First, you have to decide on what conditions you wanna do through tele, remotely, through a phone, through a FaceTime, through a Skype, through, uh, through a standardized or commercial, commercial tools. The most common diagnosis published here in family practice in 2015 are these, the ones you see on the screen. You know, follow up for sinus, URI, cough, conjunctivitis. These are the common problems that we do in family medicine. A lot of them can be followed up. Either a patient can call you, a patient that you know, you're familiar with, you're comfortable with. You can call them or they can call, for, they can call you for this uh, or you see them in clinic and you call them later on after for a follow up. So these are the common conditions that are done. Notice here that we have behavioral health and chronic condition, diabetes follow-up, hypertension follow-up, uh, depression follow-up, anxiety. This is why psychiatry is on top of the list of uh, specialties using the tele, tele approach. So one is deciding what kind of uh, conditions you like to, to, to care for remotely. Second, you have to think, uh, there's a checklist, you have to think, uh, do I want to do it using Skype? Do I want to use it using, uh, using uh, uh, I don't know, using uh, WhatsApp? Do I want to use it only by phone? Do I need to see the people? And then are there any restrictions in the country on licensing? Are there any other vendors that can offer better than, than Skype or, or, uh, or uh, WebEx or Zoom to do it? Uh, uh, is there any way, what am I going to do without the visit? Is, am I going to ask the patients to pay? How are they going to pay? Uh, how private is the communication? How secure is it? Will someone be able to hack it and see what I have done? How will I document? Uh, how am I going to make uh, prescriptions if I want to order lab tests? So these are like details you have to decide ahead of time on how you are going to do them in your practice or in your community. Now, if you live in wealthier countries like the US, for example, they already have a lot of vendors that, uh, that provide answers for all these problems, the prescriptions, the follow-up, the licensing, the, uh, the medications, and so on. Uh, in our part of the world, in the, in the Near East, the first ever telemedicine uh, conference just happened uh, a couple of years ago in last year in February 2019. And it was not in anticipation of COVID. I think with COVID, we have moved much faster. There are now many vendors in Egypt, in Jordan, that offer telemedicine opportunity for physicians where you can use them. Assuming you decide that you wanna do telemedicine, you have to remember that you have to be ready, you yourself, you know, what is your appearance? You don't, you know, you want to look professional. You have to have a quiet room, uh, proper cameras, proper audio, uh, avoid the backlighting, for example. You have to also train your patients. So ideally what we've been doing, for example, here in, at the American University in Beirut, we have 
decided to first go with patients whom we have seen, we're familiar with. We tell them, you know, you can contact me back using a video call and uh, make sure, you know, your phone is ready for this, your phone is secure, or if you wanna use it in your computer, go to a specific website. And we give them instructions, you know, where they can sit down. This is derived from, uh, from after the COVID-19 uh, for an ENT service. So they're telling people like how, the people who come to ENT, they're telling them, you have a flashlight ready. I want to be able to see your neck. Uh, if I ask you to show me your tongue or your, your throat, this is what I'd like you to do. This is how I do my nerve exam. So it's like a handout that the clinic gives for all their patients, telling them if to, if, what to expect in a, in a telehealth visit. The same thing with, with orthopedics. You know, they give them instructions what to dress and where to stand, how to show the knee, how to move, and so on. Important, the patient has to have a phone, has to have a tablet to be able to communicate with you, has to have internet access to communicate with you. So what I have done here is briefly show you, this is New England Journal of Medicine 2016, briefly showed you some uh, ways to address the limitations of, of telemedicine. I have addressed some of the social issues, you know, the brand, national, the broadband, national issues that you have to say, face, communications, some of the clinical issues that you can examine your patients, educate them, prepare them for follow-up issues of prescribing, but there are also other issues that I did not address that one has to really think of. And for example, here we have faced some challenges with reimbursement. Many people in, in our part of the, of the universe do not think they should pay for answering a phone call. Uh, insurance companies have find this sometimes not exciting. But now with COVID, things are changing. Many insurance companies find this a way to save on visits. They think it may be worthwhile then you have to find how to charge. You charge with credit card, before, after. And the other issue are the legalities. Are you licensed to do healthcare by remote? What are the restrictions on prescribing by remote? Do we have electronic prescriptions available? So these are a lot of, a lot of hurdles that COVID has helped us push to the forefront through legislation, through our societies, through our orders of physicians to resolve. Thank you very much. This is all what I have to share with you. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Hamedi, for this really uh, enjoyable and uh, insightful uh, presentation. I will just address you one question, which was our comment probably that was uh, mentioned in the chat box. And then we'll proceed and keep the other questions till the end with the full discussion so that we have enough time to uh, go on with the presentation, if you don't mind. The uh, comment was uh, about it's not only the country readiness, but also there should be some kind of readiness or acceptance from family physician. And, they, um, and uh, the example of UK was quoted whereby uh, people, there is the infrastructure, but family physicians or primary care physicians did not really accept it and they did not adopt it. So what do you say about this? Yeah, this is why we presented three things, the country resident readiness, the provider readiness, and the patient readiness. So the country readiness requires the bandwidth, the, uh, the legislation, the leadership, uh, the, on the belt, uh, te the technology. So, but also we need the provider to be ready. Do they know how to do it? Are they willing to do it? It is not covering all the practices and, and so on. Of course, it's a, it's a major change management. Now we may be ready, the country may be ready, but certain patients would say like, I don't have a phone or I really don't want, I wanna come in and, and listen to you. And there are always all these specific situations where you definitely need to see the person to get a better, a better assessment. So it is never an either or, it's, it's a total, total package. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure many of you have questions. Please keep them to the end. Now we'll go with the presentations, but I would like each uh, president of uh, the society, member representative, to please uh, come forward unmute your phone and present yourself uh, to the audience so that they get to know you and then they can associate you with the videos that you are going to present. Now we'll start by alphabetical order. I don't know who is on, but let's start with Afghanistan. Do we have Afghanistan? No. 
seniors. So we go by um, uh, Iran. That uh, Iran. I saw him. Is uh, Jinan? Uh, Yes. And doc, yeah, uh, Dr. Kami Abu from Iran. Yeah, he is in the presentation right now. I think he has some difficulty in some, but okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. But, uh, we will back to him. Yeah, we will back to him. Yeah, we will be back to him. I missed Egypt. I'm sorry. So, representation from Egypt, please. Um, hello everyone, uh, it's Nagwa Nashat Hijazi, Associate Professor of Family Medicine. Uh, I'm representing uh, Prof. Tarit Farhad, the Chairperson of the Egyptian Family Medicine Association. Uh, and also we have a video that had been prepared by Dr. Marwa Mohassib, uh, our Asian Doctor Movement Chair. Happy Family Doctor Day everyone. Thank you. From Iraq? Montadar. From Iran? No, maybe in a while. Kuwait? Uh, I'm Dr. Mariam Al Gattan, uh, treasurer of the Medicine Society. Uh, happy Family Doctors' Day, everyone. I uh, hope that uh, we share our uh, experiences here uh, regarding COVID 19. Okay. Uh, Jordan? Dr. Tarane, Jordan? Okay. Uh, Lebanon? Uh, hello, Jinan. I am Ghassan Ahmadi. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, think, uh, I think we'll have someone else uh, present the video. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, we will, we'll show the videos all uh, together, but I okay. thought people would like to get introduced to the uh, member hello, councils. Hello, How are you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Jordan, Dr. Tarani, would you like to introduce yourself? Dr. Traune, Muhammad Rasul. You have to unmute yourself. Oh, good evening, everybody. Um, it's really a pleasure to share with you our presentation that had been submitted previously. And I want to congratulate all of you this happy uh, Family Doctor uh, Day. Wish you all of the best from my heart. Thank you. Uh, now I see Dr. Montader is back. So can you, would you like to introduce yourself? He's the president of Iraq Society. Montader. Uh, unmute yourself. Problem. Yes, he said uh, he's muted. I'm telling him to okay. uh, mute himself. Okay. Oh. Uh, Muntadir, is that you? Um, shall we move now to Morocco and then we'll get back to Iraq? Okay. Hello. Yes, Fatem Zaran Shish Alami. I am the president of Al Jamaa from Morocco. And I am glad to be with you today. And I tell you, happy family day. Uh -oh. Okay. Oman? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Abdul Aziz Al Mahrazi. I'm the president of Oman Family Medicine Society. And I wish you all happy Family Doctor Day. And thank you very much, Dr. Jinan, for organizing this uh, event. Thank you. Uh, Palestine, I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure they joined. Palestine, okay. And then Qatar, they didn't join. Okay, uh, last time Iran and Iraq, anyone is still available or there? Uh. Oh, we have Pakistan is not in Emirates. Okay. All right. Pakistan is here, yeah. Yeah, but um, okay, Hina, if you feel like um, talking to everybody, uh, but uh, you're um, uh, okay. Yes. Iran, uh, on Iran. behalf of yeah, on behalf yes. of uh, Dr. Kamiabi, and uh, this is Farmer Rafi, and Happy Family Doctors Day, and uh, thank you, Jinan, for this webinar, and uh, mm -hmm. all success for all people and all colleagues in this day. Thank you everyone uh, and uh, i would like also to welcome pakistan and bahrain who are part of the um, uh, attendees and participating in this but uh, we don't have member representatives in our council so hopefully next time uh, we can have a common uh, webinar with everyone now we'll move to the uh, videos that uh, each member organization has prepared uh, about the achievements of family doctors in uh, their own region so, and we uh, try to collate them all in one, going by alphabetic order. And uh, please, Hassan, can we go over it? Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Sino, family physician on behalf of Afghan Family Medicine Association from Kabul, Afghanistan. First of all, please accept my sincere greeting at meanwhile, happy World Family Doctor Day to dear Mr. Jinan, President of Wonka Emar, and all respected members. So far, total cases of COVID-19 in country is more than 4,000 cases, which 85% are active cases, 12% are recovered cases, and 2.8% are dead cases. Due to lack of accurate and reliable reporting system, the real number and statistics uh, are more than done which had been reported. Family medicine is specialty established in 2005 in Cure International Hospital in Kabul. We have 79 family physicians, which unfortunately the first victim of COVID-19 was a family doctor, rest in peace Dr. Anif. However, it was not the end of our efforts and despite many challenges in front of health sector and the country, family doctors have considerable activities in three following aspects. In preventive and community measures, patient management and participating in national conferences related to fight COVID-19. In preventive measures to increase public awareness regarding social distance, hygiene, Afghan family physicians was active in social media by publishing post distribution of informative brochures and distribution of uh, emergency food aid for needy uh, people during country lockdown and teaching of hospital staffs. In COVID-19 patients management, mm -hmm. Afghan family physicians are initiated by serving voluntarily an Afghan Japan hospital which is designed for COVID-19 patients. They are caring for critically COVID nineteen and beside that we do counseling and caring for national alliance to fight COVID nineteen conferences and workshops. In terms of this year, work only Doctor Day. Uh, deemed first and last out rule, we had begun fighting by losing off our talented and young doctor, and we will keep up fighting till complete eradication of COVID-19 in country. It explicates that Afghan physicians, like their counterparts and all over the world, are gatekeeper in the fight against COVID-19. Thanks for your attention. Long life, family, medicine.
Hello everyone. This is an honor for us here in Egypt to share our experience in dealing with COVID-19 pandemic in the World Family Doctor Day on May 19th. Under the umbrella of Wonka EMR, the Razi Young Doctor Movement and the Egyptian Family Medicine Association. In the Egyptian primary healthcare settings, we are working on two dimensions, our patients and our healthcare providers. As regards our patient, a system of triage has been established to early identify those who have fever or respiratory symptoms according to the case definition of the World Health Organization for COVID positive patients. We also have established a system for telehealth for assessing the patients to determine whether their conditions require immediate management to decrease unnecessary visits. Also, awareness messages have been delivered regularly to all attendants during their waiting time, either through posters, videos, or live educational sessions. As regards our healthcare providers, training sessions for appropriate use and disposal of personal protective equipment and appropriate steps for hand hygiene are being conducted regularly. Our facilities are regularly disinfected. Finally, the situation is really serious, so stay home, stay safe. Thank you. بنام خدا و با سلام اجازه میخوام قبل از هر چیز هر زهده با احترام داشته باشم حضور ریاست محترم منطقه و همین طور رو از سالی انجمن های منطقه میدیترانی شرقی سازمان جهانی پزشک خانواده سمیمان رو تبریک ارز میکنم این روز بزرگ را حضور همه پزشکان عمومی و پزشکان خانواده گران قدر و مسلما انتخاب و گرامی داشته چون این روزی صرفا یک تجلیل نمادین نبایستی باشه فرصتی است برای ارزیابی و برای رسد نظام های سلامت و همینطور نقد حکومت ها در روی کردشون نسبت به این برنامه مترقی و جهانی پاندمی کووید 19 به همه حکومت ها اثبات کرد و آنها رو در فکر فرو برد که اگر سرمایه گذاری عظیمی بکنند نسبت به سطح یک خدمات سطح اول قطعا با استفاده از این ابزار می توانند سواد سلامت مردم رو افزایش بدن می توانند نگرانی های مردم رو با این ابزار کاهش بدن می توانند غربالگری ها تشخیص و درمان های تصویل شده رو انجام بدهند و بدین ترتیب می توانند بار بیماری ها رو در حوزه تخصصی و بیمارستانی کاهش بدن و این به رغم خسارت های جانی اقتصادی و اجتماعی تجربه گران قدری است در کشور بنده هم قریب به 27 میلیون نفر از جمعیت روستایی و حدود 5 نفر از جمعیت شهری تحت پوشش برنامه پزشک خانواده قرار دارند و نزدیک به 8000 نفر از همکاران بنده با این طرح در حال همکاری هستند متاسفانه در این بحران ما نزدیک به صد نفر از همکارانمون رو چه از جامعه پزشکی پرستاری و چه کادر خدمات و پشتیبانی از دست دادیم و شاید مهمترین علت اون هم پای مردی ایثار و جانفشانی این عزیزان و تنها نگذاشتن مردم بود پزشکان خانواده و پزشکان اون ما خوش درخشیدند شوهر و انجمن به معنای واقعی ایثار کردن بستای حفاظتی رو سعی کردن به جامعه پزشکی برسونند حتی بستای معیشتی در این ارتباط تهیه کردن برای اون مردم و بیش از اون تجهیزاتی رو برای بیمارستان ها تهیه کردن و ارسال کردن با جمع آوری کمک های خیرین انجمن پزشکان عمومی هم در این مورد فعالیت هایی کرد شاید مهمترین فعالیت اون در ارتباط با آموزش مردمی بود و همینطور آموزش های تخصصی که با همکاری سازمان نظام پزشکی 
و جمعیت هلال احمر جمهوری اسلامی انجام شد کار دیگرش بحث غربالگری مجازی جمعیتی بود با الگوریتمی علمی و در سایتی تحت عنوان تستات کورمدات آی آر چندین میلیون نفر از مردم رو غربالگری کرد که این موضوع مورد توجه دولت قرار گرفت و هم از الگوریتم و از هم از این برنامه به طرز شاید توجهی استفاده کرد در حوزه اجتماعی پویش مردمی مبارزه با کرونا رو ما را اندازی کردیم که با کمک چیزی بلوش هفتاد انجمن پزشکی و غیر پزشکی و سازمان های مردمی در حوزه اجتماعی در حال برنامه ریزی هستیم طبیعتاً فعالیت های بیشتری هم صورت گرفته که در سه دیگه من نمیتونم در جده اونها صحبت بکنم اما سخن آخرم این هست که پاندمی و ما اثبات کرد که مرس های جغرافیایی کم رنگ شده هم بستگی جهانی بیشتر شده این بیماری و همه گیری اون باعث شد هم بستگی مردم و نوع دوستی افزایش پیدا کنه باعث شد گفتمان بین نظام های سلامت و پژوهشگران در سطح جهانی برقرار شده و به نظر میرسه میریم به سمت تلطیف دیپلماسی سیاسی برحال این امیدواری برای بنده هست که در سال آینده بتوانیم تجربیاتی که در ارتباط با کرونا داریم به اشتراک بگذاریم و نفع خوبی در این ارتباط همه ما داشته باشیم خیلی ممنون و متشکرم Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Muntadar Saad Jabir, President of the Iraqi Family Physician Society. On behalf of our society, on the occasion of the World Family Doctor Day, we would like to present our honest graduate and praise to all their colleagues and wish to them good health and happiness as they facing the pandemic coronavirus in the first line of the, our country. Besides this event, we decided to this event to confirm our appeals to support and empower the family doctor with the hard work by providing all the available capabilities while performing their sacred duties. We assure our unceasing support to all colleagues in their professional and academic way by raising their voices to the relevant authorities hoping to preserve and save the environment to help them for delivering great jobs. Finally, every year on the Family Doctor, all the best. Happy Family Doctor Day. Thank you.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله أجمعين بداية تقبل الله طاعتك بهذا الشهر الفضيل وخصوصا ونحن في العجل الأواخر من هذا الشهر معكم دكتور هدى دويسان رئيس كلية الرعاية الصحية الأولية ورئيس رابطة أطباء العائلة والممارسين العامين بمناسبة يوم الطبيب العائلة العالمي والذي يصادف 19 مايو 2020 الكلية ورابطة تهن أطباء العائلة والممارسين العامين في بلدنا الحبيب الكويت وكذلك جميع بلاد العالم وكذلك التهنئة تشمل جميع الطواقم عاملة في وزارة الصحة والمستشفيات والمراكز الرعاية الصحية الأولية العامة منها والخاصة ونتمنى للجميع الصحة والعافية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم معاكم الدكتورة دينا جاسم طبيب رئيس مركز علي محمد الثنيان الغانم الصحي ومدير برنامج التدريبي لطب العائلة يسعدني في هذا اليوم اللي صادف يوم طبيب العائلة أني أشارككم بعض الكلمات في هذه الأيام نواجه متغيرات جسيمة في مواقع العمل ونتحمل أعباء ومسؤوليات جديدة لم نتعهدها من قبل بالإضافة إلى ضغوط التعايش مع التوتر والقلق ومجابهة المجهول ولكن عندما أفكر بأطباء العائلة ومنتسبي البورد الكويتي كيف واجهوا تلك التحديات والصعاب أشعر صراحة بالفخر والاعتزاز هذه الظروف الاستثنائية هي فرصة للارتقاء وتطوير المهارات للاستمرار بتقديم الخدمات الطبية للمجتمع على أعلى المستويات ومن هذا المنطلق في يومكم العالمي أحب أشكر كل أطباء العائلة على جهودهم العظيمة في جميع الميادين. Hello, I'm Dr. Sosan Benai, consultant family physician, head of Portobello Clinic and assistant director of Kuwait Family Medicine Board. The emergence of COVID-19 cases coincided with the celebrations of National and Liberation Day in Kuwait. On the first day back to work, we had our plan ready. A trial system was implemented for the first time in primary care. An isolation room for suspected cases of COVID-19 and a respiratory clinic were established. Designated staff wore their PPE, all other staff wore face masks. The clinic previously established a WhatsApp number for patients' inquiries. This now became the clinic's hotline for medical consultations. Other clinics established virtual consultations. Also, with the help of local volunteers, we offered home delivery for medications for those with chronic diseases as well as elderly patients. With a determined team, we are ready to fight coronavirus. معكم دكتور عليا صادق استشاري طب عائلة ترينر وكزامنر برنامج طب العائلة من 25 ثلاثة بلشت تجربتي بمحجر كوت وبما أن الفريق الطبي كله طب عائلة وعندهم المهارات الإدارية والكلينيكية الكافية بدينا نحط الآليات للعمل بالمحجر أول آلية كان تجهيز عيادة من الصفر بغرفة فندق وفرنا الأجهزة المطلوبة جهزنا ملفات خاصة بالنزلاء واللي كان أغلبهم رادين من العلاج بالخارج انتقلنا من مرحلة البيبر وورك للبيبر لس بعدها حطينا آلية للأدمشن والدشارج للنزلاء بطريقة آمنة وسريعة لحماية الفريق الطبي اعتمدنا على الفون كونسلتيشن للنزلاء وكان العمل بالعيادة على مدار ال 24 ساعة فريق المحجر متطوعين تمريض طوارئ طبية داخلية كان يعملون على, ال 24 على مدار ال 24 ساعة لراحة النزلاء خلاصة تجربتي أنا فخورة كمدربة ببرنامج طب العائلة أني أشوف ثمار جهودنا بتخريج أطباء مميزين كان لهم بصمة كل الفرقة التطوعية لمحاربة الكورونا Hello, uh, I hope you're doing well and keeping safe. Uh, my name is Mona Osman and I will be presenting on behalf of the Lebanese Society of Family Medicine, uh, led by Dr. Hassan Ahmede. Uh, I would like first to wish you uh, a happy World Family Doctor Day. Um, I will be discussing briefly the role that our family doctors uh, are playing during this pandemic. So our story in the country with uh, COVID-19 uh, started uh, in February, uh, where the first case was diagnosed on February 21st, and so far we have uh, 931 diagnosed cases. We're still in level three of uh, transmission, and uh, the lockdown measures uh, were uh, eased and decreased uh, starting uh, May 18th uh, by the government after more than two months of, uh, of uh, uh, strict uh, lockdown. Uh, hopefully things will remain under control uh, uh, with, the, with the COVID-19. Uh, so our family doctors have been active, whether with patients, or whether, uh, whether in the community. Uh, 
so at the level of uh, the patient care, uh, they continue to providing uh, medical services, uh, whether in private clinics, emergency rooms, or primary health care centers. Uh, this was done uh, for urgent cases most of the times uh, to avoid uh, exposure and uh, many institutions also started implementing online uh, consultations, online clinical consultations. Uh, uh, many doctors were also involved in uh, raising awareness, uh, educating the community on uh, preventive measures to decrease uh, uh, COVID-19 and at the same time raising uh, the uh, awareness for healthcare workers on how to protect themselves. This was done uh, through different channels, whether media, TV, radio or social media, Twitter, Facebook and others. Um, um, uh, an important uh, activity that uh, uh, family doctors were involved in uh, also was uh, participating uh, in uh, the COVID-19 uh, or flu clinics that were established in uh, some institutions in, uh, in Lebanon. Uh, an example is in the military hospital and another example is at the American University of Beirut flu clinic where family medicine uh, faculty members and residents were involved in uh, evaluating patients presenting with symptoms suggestive of uh, COVID-19 as well as conducting the PCR uh, screening. Um, many family doctors also were uh, uh, members of the health committees in the municipalities uh, and they worked with these municipalities to raise awareness and to uh, manage uh, uh, isolation measures and uh, 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 decrease exposure at the level of the community. In addition, the Lebanese Society of Family Medicine developed a guide to support municipalities in dealing with, uh, with this uh, pandemic. Uh, in addition to that, we created a WhatsApp group for uh, the members of the society where uh, sharing updates on COVID-19 as, as well as uh, uh, individual experiences is, is being uh, uh, done. And uh, some of our doctors are working on uh, raising awareness on reproductive health as well as gender-based violence uh, during this, uh, this time uh, period. I would like to thank you at the end and uh, wishing you again a uh, happy World Family Doctor Day. Hi, Fatim Zara, I'm Shish Alami, Moroccan Private General Practitioner and President of MG Maroc, the National Collective of Moroccan General Practitioners. Like all family doctors around the world, we take care of our patients in many ways. Through so consultations, home visits, by listening to them, by practicing prevention, and by giving them advices. During the pandemic, we take care of our patients and we follow chronic cases, particularly during the religious month of Ramadan, which requires fasting, while still accommodating acute pathologies. But our attention is particularly focused on screening potential cases of COVID-19 that we direct to centers specialized in diagnosis and management of this pathology. In our office, we regularly, regularly sanitize the premises and provide patients with protective means such as disinfectants for shoes and hand washing, hydroalcoholic gels and medical masks for those not wearing any. It is to be noted that medical masks are made available to very low and subsidized prices in grocery stores and pharmacy. We manage on a regular basis the psychology side effects of the pandemic. We also remain available to our patients via telephone, WhatsApp, and etc. Some private general practitioners and some retired doctors have volunteered to help in public hospitals. During this pandemic, our association MG Maroc organizes for doctors online seminars and conferences on various pathologies, including chronic pathologies, pathologies related to Ramadan, as well as subjects about COVID-19. For the general public, we have produced informational posts 
and conferences with the participation of municipalities on the means of protection against COVID-19. On pathologies related to Ramadan, on chronic diseases, including diabetes, and among other things. A spontaneous solidarity emerged between doctors, government bodies, NGOs, and public. So, congratulations to all family doctors around the world for your contribution during this pandemic. Ramadan Mubarak and Happy Family Doctor Day. Heureuse journée du médecin de famille. يوم سعيد للطبيب بتاريخ الحادي والثلاثين من شهر ديسمبر من عام 2019 أعلنت جمهورية الصين لمنظمة الصحة العالمية وجود إصابات من فيروس مستجد في مدينة يوهان الصينية بدأ العالم يستنفر لمرحلة جديدة من التحديات الصحية وأمست الدول تراقب عن كثب ازدياد الإصابات والوفيات في مختلف بقاع العالم بلا استثناء ولم تكن سلطنة عمان في معزل عن هذا الوباء فلقد كانت كالكثير من الدول المجاورة سباقة في بحث آليات التعامل مع التطورات الناتجة عن فيروس كورونا المستجد للحد من تأثيرات انتشاره على المجتمع وذلك من خلال الإشراف المباشر لعاهل البلاد المفدة وتشكيل لجنة عليا تتولى اتخاذ القرارات المصيرية المتعلقة بهذا الشأن وفي خضم هذه الأحداث برز دور الرعاية الصحية الأولية في السلطنة ممثلا بطب الأسرة في المراكز والمجمعات الصحية كونها الخط الأول في سلم الرعاية الصحية في البلاد فلقد كان دورها ملموسا في مناقشة الحيثيات ووضع الخطط وتحليل البيانات وعرضها على المختصين لاتخاذ القرارات المناسبة لكل مرحلة ومع إعلان منظمة الصحة العالمية هذا الفيروس كوباء عالمي بتاريخ الثاني عشر من مارس من عام 2020 أصبحت كل المراكز الصحية وعيادات طب الأسرة تعمل كخلية نحل لساعات طويلة استعدادا لهذا الضيف الثقيل فبدأت بتطبيق قوانين الحماية من العدوى في كل مؤسساتها وتطبيق التباعد الاجتماعي لمرضاها وموظفيها وقد قام أطباء الأسرة أيضا بالتعاون مع فريق مكافحة العدوى بتدريب جميع العاملين من أطباء وممرضين وفنيين في هذه المؤسسات الصحية على خطوات تعقيم اليدين وتطبيق جميع الإجراءات الاحترازية أثناء معاينة المرضى المشتبه إصابتهم بهذا الفيروس فدور طبيب الأسرة يبدأ من اللحظة التي يدخل فيها المريض للمؤسسة الصحية وذلك من خلال أخذ معلومات المريض والتاريخ المرضي وفحص المريض سريريا وإجراء المسحة بالطريقة الصحيحة ومن ثم صرف العلاج المناسب له ولا يقتصر دور طبيب الأسرة على هذا الجانب فحسب بل ويتعداه إلى الكثير من الأعمال الأخرى التي يحتاج فيها الطبيب لمتابعة مرضاه المصابين بالفيروس عن طريق الهاتف وتتبع جميع الحالات المخالطة لهم والاتصال بهم ومعاينتهم وإرسال طاقم طبي لهم إلى المنزل إذا استدعى الأمر كما لا يخفى دور أطباء الأسرة في متابعة المؤسسات الصحية الخاصة والوقوف على جاهزيتها في استقبال الحالات المشتبه بإصابتها وتسهيل كافة الإمكانيات للقيام بالدور المنوط على أفضل وجه وحين أصبح الوباء نقطة حوار ساخنة لجميع أفراد المجتمع كان ظهور أطباء الأسرة جليا في وسائل الإعلام المختلفة كالتلفاز والإذاعة وجميع وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي وذلك للحديث عن مستجدات الجائحة ونشر المعلومة الطبية الصحيحة ودحض الشائعات وقد حرص أطباء الأسرة على تبادل الخبرات والنقاشات العلمية عن طريق عقد اجتماعات وحلقات تعليمية إلكترونية لجميع الأطباء العاملين في الرعاية الصحية الأولية وذلك إيمانا منهم بضرورة تبادل المعلومات ومناقشة آخر مستجدات الأبحاث العلمية في هذا الصدد إن المتأمل في المنظومة الصحية في السلطنة أثناء الجائحة يدرك يقينا كم المسؤولية الملقاة على عاتق طبيب الأسرة ومدى نجاحه في التصدي لها 
وهو بلا شك الركيزة الأساسية للرقي بجودة الرعاية الصحية الأولية جميعنا حريصين على سلامة المرضى اللي في الداخل وعلى سلامة التواصل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انا الدكتور محمد ربعي اخصائي طب الاسره ورئيس جمعيه طب الاسره في فلسطين ومدير المركز الوطني لتاهيل مركز علاج كورونا. منذ انتشار فيروس كورونا في العالم بدات دوله فلسطين باتخاذ مجموعه اجراءات لتفادي انتشار هذا الوباء. وقبل ظهور الفيروس بشكل رسمي اغلقت وزاره الداخليه الفلسطينيه مجموعه من المطاعم والمقاهي التي دخلها مجموعة من السياح الكوريين بعد أن تم إعلان إصابتهم بالفيروس وفي الخامس من آذار تم إعلان بشكل رسمي أول تسجيل سبع حالات لمصابين لفيروس كورونا في منطقة بيت لحم بعد مخالطته بالسياح اليونانيين توالت الاصابات وانتشر المرض يصل اليوم في العدد الى الحالات المسجله 548 حاله تعافى منها 426 وتوفي اربع حالات وكان لاطباء طب الاسره دور كبير في هذه الجائحه حيث انهم تقدموا الصفوف وكان لهم دور ريادي في اداره المراكز العلاجيه ومراكز الحجر ومراكز الفحص وكان لهم دور اساسي في وضع السياسات والبروتوكولات الصحيه الخاصه بعلاج كورونا والبروتوكولات الخاصه باخراج المرضى وعمليه التعامل مع المرضى كان لهم دور ريادي في قياده واداره المراكز الصحيه ومراكز العلاج ومراكز الفحص الاستقصائي وكان لهم دور كبير في مراكز الفحص والتقصي حيث شاركوا بشكل كبير في سحب عينات من مختلف المناطق ومن المرضى والمخالطين كان لهم دور كبير في التثقيف الصحي والتثقيف والارشاد النفسي وكان لهم دور كبير في الدعم النفسي للمرضى المصابين وكان لهم دور كبير في محاربه التنمر الاعلامي مؤسسة الرعاية الصحية الأولية الخطوة الأولى لصحة عائلتك نحن أطباء الأسرة نعمل كتفا بكتف مع زملائنا الأطباء في جميع التخصصات للكشف والتقصي عن حالات كوفيد-19 بالإضافة للحد من الآثار المترتبة لهذا الوباء قام أطباء الأسرة بلعب دور مهم في هذه الأزمة من خلال توفير الدعم المعنوي والنفسي إلى جانب اهتمام بالجوانب الصحية الأخرى كما أنهم يقومون بلعب دور مهم في فهم طبيعة هذا المرض من خلال القيام بالأبحاث الطبية اللازمة يلعب أطباء الأسرة دور رئيسي في إدارة تفشي الوباء ودور محوريين فهم أول من يحضر وآخر من يغادر وغالبا ما يكون أطباء الأسرة أول من يتواصل مع المريض أظهرت الجائحة الدور المركزي للقطاع الصحي وبالأخص لأطباء الأسرة مما لعبوه من دور جوهري للتصدي لهذه الجائحة مؤسسة الرعاية الصحية الأولية الخطوة الأولى لصحة عائلتك Uh, we still have one more video from Jordan. It was uh, difficult to download uh, 
there was problem downloading. Now we're going to have it in 10 minutes, it's 10 seconds. Okay. Okay. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, Ramadan Mubarak. I would like to thank Wonka for organizing this webinar on the occasion of World Family Doctor Day. At the same time, I want to send my sincere gratitude and congratulations to all family physicians around the world. It is with great pleasure that Jordan Society of Family Medicine joins Wonka member in celebrating World Family Doctor Day. This occasion is wonderful opportunity to acknowledge the crucial role of Jordanian family doctors in healthcare system in general and during COVID-19 crisis in particular. They really have a first in, last out role. As always, they stand in the forefront and they are very important coordinators of primary healthcare teams. Since the early days of COVID-19 crisis, family doctors played a very pivotal role. They were the suitable and wisdom choice to provide care to thousands of Jordanian quarantined in hotels. Basically, because family doctors are well trained in the management of acute and chronic cases. Also, they provided instruction to quarantine citizens regarding infection control. Family physicians led the teams of early detection and case finding contact tracing. During the country lockdown, family doctors who were working in Ministry of Health continued to provide care to patients of chronic disease through 24-hour outline, ask your doctor, and by delivering medicines to patients in their homes. They reached their patients in need through innovative ways of practice, new modes of practice, such as the use of internet and digital health. So digital and online video consultations were run using Zoom and some platforms like Tubcan and Visit. They continue to provide reproductive health, family planning, mental health counseling by e-health tools and through the tools that provided and submitted by the National Hakim Electronic Records. Shouts and applause are ringing out in many lockdown cities in Jordan. And social media is being flooded with messages of support for those braving the outbreak to help others. Not all heroes wear capes in the minds of the COVID-19 pandemic. The real heroes wear scrubs. My passion for family medicine is personal as well as professional. Always proud of Jordanian family doctors. Congratulations to all. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Wissam al mawardi رئيس الرابطة السورية لطب الأسرة رمضان كريم كسانة بخير ننقل تحيات كافة الأطباء الأسرة والأطباء العامين في الجمهورية السورية لكل زملائنا في من اختصاص طب الأسرة في العالم العربي والعالمي ومن لهم كلام أنتم بخير مناسبة يوم طبيب الأسرة نتمنى العافية والسلام للجميع في ظل مكافحة هذا الوباء وباء الكورونا نحن في الجمهورية العربية السورية عملنا إجراءات احترازية مشددة منذ بدء الإعلان عن الوباء بالعالم طبعا طبيب الأسرة كان شريك لأطباء والزملاء العاملين في القطاع الصحي تحت إشراف وزارة الصحة ومتابعة شخصية وحثيثة جدا من الجاهزية في وزارة الصحة ومن سيد وزير الصحة مشكور كنا معه كنا موجودين كلياتنا بالمشافي بالمراكز الصحية بفرق التقصي الوبائي بفرق الترصد وببعضنا بمشافينا أو بأقسام العزل والعلاج أو بمتابعة بأقسام بماكن الحجر ومتابعة الوافدين على حدود بالأماكن 
الموجودة فيها الانتشار للوباء بكلمة مختصرة أطباء الأسرة حاضرين في كل مكان في كل فريق يعمل على الأرض في الجمهورية السورية شكر كبير وجزيل للسيد وزير الصحة ولوزارة الصحة كاملة لكل المجهودات التي قدمتها خلال الفترة الماضية من دعم لوجستي من توجيهات عملية من توجيهات علمية من أجراءات احترازية مشددة من احتضان الكادر الطبي وتأمين وسائل الحماية والوقاية الفردية لكل العاملين الصحيين على أرض الجمهورية العربية السورية وأيضا من التعليم اللي كان موجود خلال الفترة الماضية والتدريب الكوادر على كيفية التعامل مع هذا الوباء سواء في النقاط الحدودية سواء في المطارات أو سواء في القطاعات الصحية أو المؤسسات الصحية كافة منقول كل عام وأطبائنا كلهم بخير وكل عام وكل زملائنا بألف خير ويعطيكم ألف عافية وموفقين Thank you all for uh, these nice videos and presentations. Uh, we feel proud to be family doctors and uh, uh, we feel more encouraged to do more and more. Now, um, it's about time. I, um, I really thank you all for being here. I just uh, would like to give the last chance for Dr. Saad to present himself to the panelists, uh, to uh, the audience, if he's still around. Are you still around? Okay, any of the panelists has the last comment to make or uh, any, um, uh, any idea to present? Uh, Doctora, there were questions uh, regarding legal consequences and the uh, difference between real exam and uh, telemedicine okay. that we have not addressed uh, very well. I think okay. legal is the main issue that we have faced, for example, in Lebanon. Uh, or in the U.S., they face for malpractice, getting a license and uh, documentation. Um, we have our order of physicians has requested that we do not uh, prescribe anything uh, on the phone, uh, on the phone or or uh, otherwise uh, by or by by video. So this is something you have to work on. Kill every country with with the with the. Uh, with the order of physicians they have to change these habits. I think now with, because of COVID, the, the, the general mood is ready to accept uh, this change. Prescribing, we have to prescribing, we have to write down a piece of paper and sign it on triplicate, it's a nightmare. So what we do, for example, is we tell the patient, you know, come in at your convenience and pick up the prescriptions if they need a prescription. So this, these are the frustrating things. Yeah, legal is a major issue that has to be worked out. Real exam versus uh, telehealth. One of the nicest, uh, I, I sent you the, uh, the, if you look at the slides, there's a link to one of the orthopedic uh, telehealth uh, services where they describe how to do, and they have videos. In fact, online, you can go on uh, one of the telehealth provider. They show you how to do all the, uh, orthopedic tests, orthopedic exams uh, using online. So you, how, how you instruct the patient what to wear, how to stand and, and how to do things. So, but of course, it has always been an issue that certain things you need human human interaction and uh, it's, it's a challenge. Thank you. Uh, I'm not able to see all the questions. If you have more questions addressed to you, would you like to? Yeah, I think I covered uh, all of them. Okay. All right. But uh, anyway, it's, the, it's almost 6.30. And uh, I appreciate everybody's uh, participation and contribution. It is iftar time in some parts of uh, this region. And I'm really happy we had good attendance and uh, good, um, uh, good feedback. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to organize more webinars and uh, involve everybody in uh, this activity. Now I would like to close with um, uh, the uh, last um, uh, PowerPoint slide, Hussain, if possible, which is a greeting to all doctors. Um, it is written by, um, okay. It is uh, written by uh, Dr. Nabil, uh, 
Kanaan, who is the family physician, and he is, um, I'm not able to move, okay. I did, uh, you want to read it in Arabic, it, it rhymes, or you can, uh, someone can yes. translate, it's funny. <laughs> Yeah, uh, 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 I thought of translating, but I, uh, then I saw it will lose the rhyme. So I'm going to read it in Arabic now. طبيب الأسرة فنان يعرف أسرار الإنسان طفلا كان أم شيبا امرأة رجلا سيان يمزج معرفة الطب والمجتمعات في آن يرفع شأن الوقاية أهملت عبر الأزمان ينسط إنصاتا جما يعطي وقتا للشبان كبار السن ملجأهم للصحة لهم عنوان بسمته لا تبرحه هاتفه دوما رنان لا يعالج أعطاء بل امرأ ضمن السكان وإذ تفتر بيئة شاملة تغزو البلدان لب الواجب لا يغلبها لا يأبه دفع الأثمان طبيب الأسرة إنسان للصحة خير ربان Happy World Family Doctor Day. Thank you all for participating and hope to see you in other webinars. Bye-bye.